Attention! McCarthy Math Academy proudly presents the Math FSA Boot Camp Series. Hello everyone, I'm Miss McCarthy and I am so excited that you are here. are more than a test score. We don't want you stressing out about this test. We just want you to activate your greatness within. And you might be saying, But Miss McCarthy, listen, I know that math is your jam, but math and I, yeah, we're not really the best of friends. You may have struggled in the past, and you know what? Good. Struggle is necessary because struggle makes us stronger. If we go over something in these videos that you're like, hmm, that skill didn't quite click yet, I'm gonna send you to more videos to help you practice. Your teachers and I, we can expose you to all kinds of tools and strategies, but you have to choose to use them. You have to choose to own them. Imagine opening up that test and feeling so excited to throw down your best. This can be your reality. So now is the time that you need to activate the person you were born to be and let's do this! Are you ready to throw 100% focus, hustle, and heart into this right now? Yeah! That's what I'm talking about, yes! Okay, let's go ahead and jump on into today's episode of the Math FSA Bootcamp Series. And <laughs> I almost forgot to say, uh, let me teach ya! What's happened in fourth grade? Welcome to video number 12 of the Math FSA fourth grade boot camp series. I'm super excited that y'all are here today and you know what? It's time to get busy. So what I want you to do is go ahead and solve number one and number two on your own for today. I'm hoping that you have the worksheet that you need. If not, don't worry. There should be a link below or somewhere around this video that will take you to a place where you can download the worksheet that you need for this video along with the other videos in this series. So go ahead, pause the video, solve number one and number two on your own, and then come on back to see me to check your work. See you soon. All right, everybody, welcome back. So let's go ahead and break down number one. You know how we do it. First, we go ahead and we take a look at the question type. And I'm looking, I see select all real quick. I see five answer choices here. So what kind of question is this? It's a multi-select. That means that there's a very good possibility that there will be more than one correct answer. Now let's go ahead and mark up our text to have it make sense. Select all means that we're going to try all we're going to solve all the expressions expressions don't have a what an equal sign no equal sign that have a value or an amount of 36. which operation do we see happening right here it's division right but because we know the answer we could also multiply. We could use the inverse operation because multiplication and division are inverse operations, meaning that you can use one to solve the other if you need to. And I definitely like to use it for these types of problems. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to do the first two, I'm gonna mark over here so it doesn't pick up any answers. I'm gonna divide A and B and then for C, D and E, I'm going to show you how you can multiply to get the right answer, okay? That way we're doing a little bit of division, which you may have thought to do, and a little bit of multiplication, which you may have thought to do, okay? All right, so first of all, we have 108 as our dividend divided by 3, which is our divisor. Okay, so to solve part A, I'm going to go ahead and use the area model to solve it. And then for this one, I'll use the partial quotients model to solve it. So this is the area model. You put your divisor outside of three. And then inside, we're going to put our dividend, okay? And this is how I do it with an area model. I count by threes until I can get to one. Well, that would be zero times, right? Because three is bigger than one. So then I extend it to 10. Let me count by threes until I get to 10. Hit me with my threes pretty, please. Three, six, nine, 12 is too much. So three times would be nine, and then what I do is because under here I've got an eight, I'm gonna put a zero right there. So three times 
30, 3 times 30 would be 90, and then I subtract. 8 minus 0 is 8. 0 minus 9 is we need to regroup. Take 1, that becomes a 0. Give 1, that becomes a 10. 10 minus 9 is 1. Okay, so 18 is greater than 3. So that means that we can do this again. Right, 18, 18, up, 18 there. up there. Now we, now repeat. we repeat. How many times, How many can, times can 3, three go, into go, into go into 1? 1. Zero, zero times. times. How many times, How many times can, can three, three go, go into, into 18? 18? Let's count Let's by count threes, by threes to, see. to see. Hit, hit with me my with my threes, threes pretty please. please. Three, three, six, six nine, nine, four, four, fifteen, eight, eighteen, eighteen, six, times. six times. Exactly. exactly. And now, and when, now I when I subtract, subtract 18, 18 minus 18, 18, 18 what, do we what do we get? Zero. Zero. Okay. Okay. And and now what now what do I do? Yeah, I have, yeah, to, I have add to add up 30, 30 which looks, which kind, looks, of looks kind of funny as 0, 0, 0, but it's 30, 30 plus, plus 6. 6. So 30, so 30 plus, plus 6, 6 equals, equals 36. So when I solved this out, did I get a value of 36? I sure did. There we go. Okay, we're just going to ignore that. That's where I realized I didn't have enough space. But I should have been using a pencil, but it's hard for you to see a pencil on the camera, so that's why I use a pen. But luckily, you use a pencil to make the mistake, so there we go. Next one. 185 divided by 5. So let's do that. I'm going to do it using the partial quotients method this time, which is very similar to the area model. It just looks a little bit different. So same thing. Count by fives until we get to one. Well, one is less than five, so let's extend it to 18. Let's count by fives until we get to 18. Five, 10, 15, 20, too much, so three times. Times three, and five times three is 15. We have a blank space under the five, so let's put a zero. We did one zero, so let's also put a zero here, which makes sense because five times 30 equals 150. Now what do we do? Subtract. We get 35, and because 35 is less than five, we're going to repeat. Five goes into 35 how many times? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, you'll know them all shortly. 30, 35, I'm singing the multiplication mashup and it's seven times. Times seven will give us 35. And then when we subtract, we get what? Zero, awesome. And now we add up these right here, right? 30 plus seven would give us 37. There we go, which is not 36. So we can eliminate choice B. Awesome. Whatever method you like to use to divide or whatever or whatever method your teacher prefers for you to divide, use that strategy, okay? I tried to show you a couple different ones. I also like the long division way, the standard algorithm way. Um, so there's that too. But I promised you that I would show you how to multiply these as well. So let's do that. All right, so now, because multiplication and division are inverse operations, I can take, for choice C, I can take 36 and multiply it by six to see if I maybe get 216. If this is true when I multiply it, then that means that C would be true. So let's check it out. I'm gonna use the area model for multiplication. 30 will break down into 30 plus six, all right. And then we know that six times three is, hey sixes, I just met ya, you're kinda crazy. Six, 12, and 18 with one zero. And then six times six is, six, 12, and 18, 24, and 30, 36. And then I add these two partial products together, 180 plus 36. does get me an answer of 216, which is exactly what I needed it to be, which means that choice C is correct. And I've got work to prove it. My journey is on the paper. Let's try D. Let's, so that would be 36 times eight. Does that equal 286? I'm gonna put yes for the other one. It does. Let's do the area model again. I just love it so much. Okay, so eight times three is Party rocking with the eights for sure. Eight, 16, 24. 
24, and then we need one zero, right? And now eight times six. Party rocking with the eights for sure. Eight, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, 48, 48. And now we join them together. So 240 plus 48 equals 288, which is super duper close, but uh, not quite. No, because we have 288 there and 286 close, but no. All right, our final one would be 36 times nine. You can't see. <laughs> 36 times nine, does that equal 324? That's a weird four, okay. All right, let's solve that out now. That was the area model. Let's see, I'm gonna do it with the partial products way. Well, really I broke this into six times nine plus 30, 30 times nine. Now we're going to do 30 times nine, which could just be nine times three first, and then we'll add our zero in. So we got those nines, nine, 18, 27, 27 with one zero. And now we're going to join those two together. 270 plus 54, that would be, ooh, it's high up here, nice landing. Do 324, is that what it needs to be? Oh yes, which means, that 36 isn't, that E is an answer. So for number one, we have the answer choices of A, C, and E. All right, let's go ahead and check out number two. All right, for number two, it says match each expression to its correct quotient. And we have this word right here, match. So we know that the question type is going to be what? A matching item. Jot that down if you need to, and then join me. So it says match each expression which those are right here, to its correct quotient, which means that we're dividing. All right, so basically what we need to do is solve each of these and then figure out which value it is equal to. For this one, I'm going to divide, not multiply, because I've got different answers here and I might as well just figure out what the quotient is. So let's do the area model, 364. So four goes into three, zero times but it can go into 36 because 36 is greater than four. So let's count by fours until we get as close as we can to 36. If you know your fours and you should sing along with me. Four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36, which would be nine times 36. And under the four, we can pop a zero, it means put one here. So that's 90, 90 times four is 360. Subtract, what do we get? four. And four is equal to four. It's not less than four, which means that we can do it all again. Bring that four right up here. How many times does four go into four? Once. Four. Which would be four. Subtract and we get zero. And is the answer 901? No, we add them together, right? We take 90 plus one. 90 plus one which would equal 91. So for that very first row, we're gonna go all the way over to line up with the same column that has 91, which would be choice C. All right, let's try the second row. So we have a divisor of five. We have a dividend of 375. We are going to count by fives until we get as close as we can to 37 because three is too small, let's extend it to 37. So, ah, oh, nah, here come the fives, five, 10, 15, 20, 25. You'll know them all shortly. 30, 35, and 40 would be too much. So, seven times 35 is what I said. We have a blank space here, so let's plug in a zero, which means that we can't forget our zero up top. Subtract, I did not leave myself enough room to subtract. Silly me. Five minus zero is? Five, seven minus five is two. 25 is greater than five, so we can do it all again. Doop, 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 doop. Count by fives. Now let's count by fives until we get as close as we can to 25. Ah, oh, nah, here come the fives. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25. Exactly five, which is 25, which would be zero. 
Let's join together 70 plus five to get 75, right? So this one right here would be E, lines up with E. That is how we do it. Now you might be thinking, okay, let me just bubble in the last one, which would be 56 right here. Uh, no, we're gonna make sure that this is correct. You know what we could do though? We could multiply 56 times eight to see if it equals 448. Let's go ahead and check. I have a really good feeling that it might be G, but we are going to prove it. We're going to prove it by using the inverse operation. So let's see, does 56 times eight, does that equal 448? So eight times five is party rocking with the eights for sure. Eight, 16, 24, 32, 40, 40. And we also need to include the zero because it's a multiple of 10, so 400. And now eight times six would be Party rocking with the eights for sure. Eight, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, 48. And now if we join together 400 plus 48, we get 448 and the crowd goes wild. Mark choice G. All right, now if you are thinking, Miss McCarthy, my multiplication and my division is not really the sharpest that it could be. It's something that I should be practicing more. I wanna point you in the direction of some more videos right now, so let's go. As promised in this Math FSA Bootcamp series, I know that a lot of you, you know that you need to sharpen up your skills. You are ready to take charge of your learning and you're basically saying, Miss McCarthy, just show me what other videos I need to watch to get better. So what I wanna point you to first is McCarthy Math 155. You'll see a link below. You wanna pay attention to unit four because that's division. I believe unit three was multiplication. So if you know you need help with that, Three and four, those are your jam. Now McCarthy Math 155 is a membership, but you can totally grab a seven day free trial and watch all the videos and practice all that you need to do during that seven days. If you feel like it's the right fit for you, you can go ahead and subscribe. Teachers, if this is something you're interested in purchasing and becoming a member of for your students, you are able to share these videos. And I walk through how to do that in this tutorials tab, so check that out. Also, I have another series called How to Pass the Math FSA. This was my first series that I created a couple years ago, back when the FSA was a computerized test. It's not anymore for math, which is why I created the Boot Camp series, okay? So it does look a little bit different, but the questions are still great practice. So I really encourage you to check out the link below for the How to Pass the Math FSA series. You heard me throughout this video using the multiplication mashup, which millions of people have watched, and it's transforming the lives of third, fourth, and fifth graders and beyond all over the country. I know that y'all love music, which is why I put all the multiplication facts to music. So check out the multiplication mashup so you can be really quick with them if you're not already. I also encourage you to stay in the loop with everything going on in McCarthy Math Academy land. I'm on Instagram and Facebook at McCarthy Math Academy, and I'm on YouTube at McCarthy Math Academy. If you enjoyed this video, could you please smash that like button? It helps to let other students know that this is a video they can use to help them. That way it attracts more students so I can help them because y'all, I am on a mission to make math fun, to make it click and to make it stick for as many third, fourth and fifth graders as possible. So when you like these videos, it really does help to reach more students. And that is my goal. While you're at it, go ahead and subscribe. That way you're the first to know when I drop a new video. And finally, before we go, I just want you to know that you were created for a reason. That's right. You are the ones that we have been waiting for. So find your light and shine it bright. Watch out world because we have a whole new generation of world changers ready to step it up and make this world a better place. When you have the choice, choose kindness and you always have that choice. And I will see you all on the next episode.